greetings in the name of Jesus. God bless you all for being here. I must say that for me, it's an opportunity granted down from God one more time. And uh, I'm grateful. I'm honored, I have to say. Um, I'm moved by that clip, actually. Very, very moved by that clip because he just said something in that clip. And it's that um, success is about you, but significance is about others. And yes, sometimes we all aim to be successful and we, we are not mindful about the impact that it will then leave on others. And sometimes success does not bring us joy, does not bring us happiness if we have not accomplished or do the things that we meant to do in the midst of that. So for some people, they will even deem it a privilege to trample over, over you or over anyone to have success. But then it will not last for long because there are times when there's just reward. So however you deal with others, whatever you do, you will be rewarded in that same manner. <clears throat> and it's a shame that, you know, just listening to that clip, that in the end, that person took their life. It, it's sad when you hear these things because you, you, you were given a prize, an award, but it was not significant in that moment to you because what, what you were meant to do, you did not do it. So success is, a, it's about you, but significance is about others. And uh, I trust that we will hold on to that this week going forward and even make that our theme going forward in this week so that we think about others in whatever we do and to say, you know what, if I do this or if I do that, how is it going to impact someone else? Make sure that, you know, it does bring a positive impact on someone else. Praise God. God is good. Greetings to pastor and to every one of you. As I said before, it's a privilege to be in the presence of God and to be with you all here. And uh, as I was asked to share a word with you, the theme is what is your assignment? And uh, it so happened that I looked at this and I thought I would do a subheading and the subheading is, it's not about you, it's about the assignment. It's not about you, it's about the assignment. So it's not the success that you will have after, it's the significance on someone else. It's all about the assignment. What have you been asked to do? What is your assignment? And in these days, we need to know what is our assignment because we are all given an assignment on earth. Whether it's to take care of someone, whether it's to carry out some form of duties, whether it's to say something, it doesn't matter what it is. We all have an assignment. Some are greater than others, but irrespective, the assignment that you have can still impact what I do. It can still motivate me. It can still motivate someone else. So I trust that we will all ask ourselves, what is my assignment? And then to move forward with it, to see it through, irrespective of what will come your way. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for today. I would like to ask you as we just to focus and just to pray me through this. As I want to look at um, the scripture today, um, Acts chapter 16. And I'll be reading verses 9 and 10. And then I will go to 14 through 32. Hallelujah. Praise God. Acts chapter 16. Verses 9. <clears throat> and 
When the vision appeared to Paul in the night, a man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, sorry, who worshiped worship God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful house, stay. So she persuaded us. Hallelujah. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by future telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim us to the way of salvation. And this she did for many days, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said, said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, these men being Jews exceedingly trouble our city and they teach customs which are not lawful for us being Romans to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loose. And the keeper of the prison, awakening and sleep from sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, Supposing the prisons, prisoners had fled, drew his sword and said about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. These are the words of God. Father God, we thank you today. We ask that you have your way and I pray God that you will speak to us. God, it's time I ask that flesh will die and that your Holy Spirit will take over even my being God. And I pray God that we will see your words today like never before and that your eyes will be opened. I pray God that your words will speak to us today and God that we will acknowledge and that we will accept and receive. Thank you God for your presence in the name of Jesus, amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. We were very familiar with this passage of scripture. We often hear about Paul and Silas being thrown into prison and at times we even sing about this, um, the, the, this situation. But then 
I believe it goes really, really deep. There's a deeper message in this. It's not about them just being thrown into prison and that, you know, this, this jailer gave, well, attempt to kill himself. And then in the, the end, he just decided not to after hearing that the prisoners were there. Um, as we're looking at what is your assignment? You know, many years ago, if I must say that, that you know, reflecting years ago when I was back in Jamaica and I was married then, and my marriage was really awful. And because my, my husband, he was an abuser, not just verbal, but physical. And I often say to everyone that, you know, I walk around with this scar on my, in my face from when he, he hit me with a closed iron. But at the same time, we have to understand that whomever you are, whatever you're called to do, the enemy will always send an adversary. And at times we do not want to accept that even the very person in your midst will be the one that's trying to hold you back. The same person will try to fight you. The enemy will use that very person. And I remember just being in Jamaica and in that marriage. And it's like one day we're happy and the next it's almost like it's a warfare. And I'm constantly having to try to reflect and to remain focused. There are times when I, I would be told that, okay, if there's a, a convention somewhere that, oh, you're not going to that convention. And me being so determined and stubborn, I would say, I'm going. Because I have to stand up and know when the enemy is fighting. And I remember I got to that place where over the years, I, I got so frustrated. And I remember that we actually got in a fight. This was one time I decided I was going to fight back, which at the same time, it wasn't the right thing. And I remember I even drew a knife and it got back to my pastor and I was literally stripped of every position I had in the church. And I wept. I wept. I physically wept. But at the same time, I acknowledged that I was wrong. And I looked at the whole scenario and I still said, you know what? I did not come to church for position. I came to church for God. And I repented, I stayed in my church and you know, I carried on. And I remembered it was about after two years that I was then given assignments in the church positions that I would um, you know, work in. And I remember just as I was given those assignments, and I remember this particular Sunday, sorry, this particular Saturday, I was at the church preparing and setting up for um, Sunday school the following, the following Sunday because at that time was then given superintendent for the Sunday school, the children's Sunday school, and I was setting up for the children and so forth. And I remember that Saturday, my husband actually came to the church to create um, argument with me to just to upstir things. And in that moment, I recognized that this was the enemy attacking in that moment. And I said, you know what? I'm not gonna have this. I just said to him in the name of Jesus, just go, let me be. I refuse to hold the conversation at the church for the enemy to have the upper hand. And I did, decided I'm not gonna hold this conversation because I had to acknowledge that this was the enemy trying to defeat me one more time. And I said, it will not happen. So here's what I'm saying. Paul and Silas, they were given an assignment and they went to Macedonia to preach the gospel. Now, in the beginning, it was smooth sailing. Every one of us, when we first come to God, we will think, oh, this is easy. This is nice. This is smooth sailing. Yes, in the beginning, you will find that. 
But then as you carry and as you start to develop, as you start to mature, as you start to grow, you will find that you will start to have challenges. The attacks will come. So we have Paul and, pa and Silas preach the gospel and Lydia, she turned. She turned her life around and she surrendered to God and she got baptized so much so that she opened her home and invited them. And they welcomed these men of God into their home and they took care of them. It was smooth sailing. Even when you're in the church and you're pursuing and you're pushing that the enemy will send someone in that very midst, in that surroundings, in that place to attack. The enemy will send someone such a snake, such a sneaking way that at times you may not even recognize. Because here we have this woman and what this woman was saying of a fact is true because she was saying, oh, these men, they are of God. They are here preaching the gospel. They're here talking to men. These this woman, she was speaking the truth. But at the same time, here's what the Bible tells us in 1 John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So as much as this woman, she was speaking and she spoke the truth, but she was there as divination. She was, um, she, she was a soothsayer. She was soothsaying. She was talking these things. But she was not of God. She was as much as she acknowledged, because yes, the enemy, the devil himself acknowledged that God is God. When he approached Jesus, he acknowledged that this, <clears throat> that this is the son of God. So the enemy will acknowledge who you are, but at the same time, you have to recognize that, that the enemy will come to cause disruption. The enemy will come to, to cause, cause you to sway. So here we have Peter, I'm sorry, we have Paul recognize that no, this woman has been going on, going on, but she's not listening. So there and then he, 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 he basically discerned that something is wrong. Matthew 24 and verse 24 also tells us, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much, in so much that if, and I love that if, <clears throat> hallelujah. I love that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. You are an elect of God. God chose you. You were chosen by God. Men are called chosen are few. You were chosen by God for an assignment. But we have the enemy trying to work in a secret way, in a deceitful way. But we have to discern. We have to recognize that something is wrong. This is not of God. This is false. So we have Paul recognize that this woman was possessed. What did he do? He rebuked straight away. He cast out that demon. He rebuked the demon that's within her. And at the same time, many they were not. Please, what if he had just left the woman to carry on? Surely she would have went on further and caused some sort of disruption. Who knows what will happen? 
So when you recognize in the beginning that something is not of God, it is in that moment to rebuke, to bind and rebuke and say, devil, I cast you out. Devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Stand up against whatever will come against you. Because what we have to understand that when you have an assignment to carry out, the enemy will stand up against you. The enemy will attack you and he will come in different forms in different ways to try to get to you so paul recognized and paul rebuked paul got rid of and the thing is when you carry out <clears throat> such duties when you protect your assignment when you protect what god called you to do then some will not be happy with you you will then have people turn against you just morning Come and close this door, son. <clears throat> there will be those that will rise up even more because what the enemy does, when he sends an adversary and you overpower that adversary, then what he then does is to take it to another level because he then recognizes that, you know what? This, this, this demon is too low for you. This demon is too simple for you. He's going to attack you on the level he thinks you're at. Hallelujah. He thinks that you're down there. But my God, when you pray and when you dig deep in God, he's going to get a shock. Hallelujah. Because greater is he that is within you that is in the world. God will not give you an assignment and leave you open. He will not give you an assignment and leave you uncovered. God will never do that. He's going to have your back. He's going to cover you. It doesn't matter that you do not have the protection as the shield and all of that and the helmet. You do not have that for your back because guess what? God has got your back. So God is going to cover you. He's going to see you through. He's going to ensure that you go through and that you accomplish. Even though there were others that rose up against Paul and Silas. And yes, they were, they, they, they were um, arrested. They were flogged. They, they were imprisoned. They, 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 and they only done this to say that they cause public nuisance. And you see this around the world today. The moment you go out there, you see people on the streets. It's not even a privilege anymore to speak freely, to have open speech and to have free speech. Because the moment you start to talk about uh, preaching the gospel, the moment you're preaching and you're talking the truth as, as to what the Bible says, then you're liable to be arrested. It still happens. You see that so many times. YouTube is your place of information. You go there and you see these things all the time captured on video. And this is a lesson to us that we still have not overcome these things. It still happens. You can go out there and preach anything else and talk about anything else and you'll be okay. But the moment you decide I'm going to preach the gospel, then it becomes a problem. Because if you're given an assignment, the enemy will attack that assignment. He does not want you to see through. Hallelujah. So here we have Paul and Silas being arrested for speaking the truth, for preaching the gospel. This is an attack on their assignment. And I can only imagine that they went through all this pain from the, the, the stripes that were given to them. I can only imagine how sore their body was. I can only imagine how they were bleeding and they, they, their feet were swollen. They were swollen all over. I can only imagine how we prepared in these days to go through these things when we are given an assignment. It is so easy for us to say, I don't want to see this through. I'm walking away from this. It is so easy. We watched that clip just now. 
And we saw with that photographer, it was so easy for him to just take a picture, but not to help. But at the same time, what profit is it gonna bring us in the end if we do not see our assignment through? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. So we have Paul and Silas, and I'm sure that what was expected of them is that they would be crying and they, they, they're meant to weep and they're meant to mourn and to say, I, I, I'm sick, I'm in pain and to carry on. This is what they were expected to do, I'm sure. But what did they do instead when they were thrown in prison? They prayed, hallelujah. They got down in prayer. They prayed unto God. When you get to the place where you feel like, you know what? I can't do anything. I'm trapped in this. I'm imprisoned because the enemy will imprison you, not physically imprisoned, but he will imprison you in certain situations. And you have to recognize that, you know what? The enemy has got me trapped here, but I know of deliverance. I know of a way out because I have got God on my side. <clears throat> God who is a way maker. God who specializes in the things that are impossible. God who will see me through. God, God who has not given up on me. God who will never leave me nor forsake me. You have got God on your back. You have him on your side. Do not feel like you are alone. When your mother and your father forsake you, he will take you up. God will never leave you. Hallelujah. He will call you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Stand in this. Be confident in this. God will guide you through. It doesn't matter what you have been through. And I want to say to you that the attack may come in different ways. The attack may come a way to even attack your mind. The attack will come to attack your body. What are you going to do? Are you going to give up? Are you going to surrender to the enemy? You have to fight through it. There are times when you have to go through and even pretend that this is not happening. You still carry on. Just as all Paul and Silas did, they were in prison, but they were still carrying on with the worship, with acknowledging God, with glorifying God, with, with, with just worshiping him. Hallelujah. When you're going through, that's not a time to say, you know what? God has not done it for me. I give up now. What else can I do? That's the time to dig deeper in God. Many of us, we go through things. Many of us, especially in this time, when sickness is more than ever, the Bible speaks about all manner of diseases that will come on us. And we as Christians, we as the elect, we are included as well. We will be attacked even physically by our, 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 in our bodies, just as Job did. But it's not for us to give up. It's not for us to be weak. We have to be stronger in this. We have to stand and stand united as well. I pray for you. You pray for me. Let us recognize when things are not going as to how it ought to and try and fix it for heaven's sake, for God's sake. We have to say, you know what? Enough of that. Enough is enough. There are times when you have to, you have to for, for, forget even yourself. I say this to you. The enemy has even attacked my body. My, my body over the past years, and I don't complain. You see, I walk around and my stomach is bigger than it ought to. A couple years ago, I had um, an ultrasound which shows that I have abdominal hernia. It's the first you've heard me said it. I don't let it be an issue. 
Yes, the doctors say to me that I don't need to do it anything because it's not a problem yes it gives me a big stomach but that's it i pretend it's not there what i try to do is not to lift too much heavy stuff and it's a family thing my grandmother had it as well and until yes if it comes to the stage that i need to do a surgery yes i will when the enemy was not pleased with that he then attacked my knee i had a, 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 an x-ray i have arthritis in my knee but i still fight through it there are times I'm going up the stairs and, you know, even my son just morning sometimes give me when I'm going up the stairs and how I, I'm going, you know, slowly. I just recently had a, a, an MRI on my back. I have two damaged discs. I don't complain. I push through it because I know that there's a reward for me. The enemy may, may attack my body, but you know what I say? I say, God, you are a healer. I stand in this. I am not going to be overcome by the enemy. I will still go to church and I will do what I need to do. Sometimes I'm sitting and I'm moving, trying to make myself comfortable because my back is aching. But you never hear me complain. I will not complain. I will still do what I need to do and carry on for God. Because sometimes in the midst when you don't expect it, expect it, that's when your healing will come. Look at Paul and Silas who were in prison. And in the midst of praying, they carried on and they pursued. They carried on because they were given an assignment. And even in prison, that assignment was still being carried on because the assignment that was given to them back in verse 10 is that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. So even in prison, they were still preaching the gospel as much as they were perhaps in pain from all that beating that was given to them they still carried on they were still going through carrying on with their assignment and guess what guess what in that moment that earthquake happened hallelujah god will send a, an earthquake in your life to shake up things God will send an earthquake to move things. God will send an earthquake to destroy things. God will send an earthquake to change things. God will send an earthquake to move someone. God will send an earthquake to get rid of the enemy. God will send an earthquake to make a way of escape. Hallelujah. But may I also say something to you? that God will also send a test even in the midst of you going through. You might be going through and God, yes, God gave you the assignment and God sees the surroundings and where you are and knows that, well, you know what? I need to get out of this. I need a way of escape. But God will still send the test. And this is where sometimes we miss it. Because sometimes we're thinking, you know what? God has opened a door. It's for me to get out of this. You know, talking about this, I remember some years ago when I was, you, you know, maybe being in this country about three or so years. And I remember was being approached, not just by one, but two people. And I remember it was in this moment, you know, when you're in, at the place where you want to get off your feet financially, you want to, to be in a certain position, you want to do things. And back in those days, I remember it's when they had these fraud stuff going on financially. And I remember I was told, asked by someone and the person said to me, you know, if I have your bank account, I could have some money sent to your account. And I said to, to, to the person, are you gonna send me some money? And the person said, no, I'll just have it sent to you from a source, lots of money, man, lots of money. And I said, what? I said, no, thank you. I didn't even think about it. I did not stop to think about it, not about what I have to deal with. 
I just said, no, thank you in that moment. And you know what? N never again did I speak to that person. That's it. And when the enemy realized that I did not fall into that, he then sent another proposal. And this person this time came with a form, another person, and said, you know, I know of a source to get some money. If you just fill this form and I'll give it back in and you get some money. I said, is this a loan? How much will be repayments? I need to know all of this. And the person goes, oh, you don't have to repay back anything, man. You, you just maybe get 10 or 15 grand. And I said, what? I said, no, thank you. I'm not interested. I said, you keep that form. I don't want it. You have to recognize when the enemy bring things and present it to you. And it's in that moment that you would want that thing that you will just flourish in it. But you have to recognize that, you know what? This could be the enemy, but at the same time, it could be a test. God will want to see how we will react to certain things. Because here we have Paul and Silas in prison and in the moment, God came through and God did something. What did God do when the earthquake happened? The doors were all opened. The doors were, went open and the, the, the bands fell off them. The shekels fell off. Everything came off. You'll see that as your way of escape. I'm getting out of this. I'm running for my life. I'm going. This is my way of getting out of this. Ha. Huh. Not always, not every door you're meant to go through because you are still in your assignment. You're still meant to see through. Not every door that's open you're meant to walk through. It may seem like it, but think about have you accomplished? Have you completed what God has asked you to do? Have you seen it through? God has asked you to pray for someone. Have you prayed until they see success? Have you prayed until they see a miracle? Have you ministered to someone until they convert their life to God? Because that's what the gospel is about. The gospel is about people being saved, being turned from their sin, turned to God. Have you prayed for someone? a family member that they turn to God. So here we have, here we have the glory of God in the prison. Paul and Silas, they could have thought, you know what, let's get out of here, but they stayed. They stayed because they know they have an assignment. What's their assignment? to preach the gospel. It doesn't matter where they went, where they were. It did not matter. The assignment can be fulfilled there. And they recognized that they could do that. So what they did, they stayed in prison and they preached to these people. They delivered the word to these people. They introduced these people to God so that they could be saved. And here we have the jailer, all of a sudden, in the moment, woke up from sleep. And he was so scared, he was now frightened for his own life. You can be scared of something, and even though you're scared, he was so much fearful that he even wanted to take his own life. As much as if they had escaped, chances are he would be um, he would be killed, but at the same time, he would still kill himself because that was his attempt. But God is such that Paul said, to yourself, no harm. Don't think that because someone has not turned in a moment that you should give up, continue to pray for that person because God will save them Jesus himself and interrogate their spirit and put that spirit of repentance into them. That is the greatest miracle. When God saves someone, when someone turns and Jesus says yes, 
Repentance is here. That's the greatest miracle. And my prayer is that every one of us will be saved and remain saved so that we can receive the crown of life and be proud and walk around. It doesn't matter what affliction may come, on, come upon us. It does not matter. Fight through it. My test is different from yours. Your test is different from mine. We are challenged in different ways, but when I hear your testimony, I feel motivated. I feel encouraged to carry on. Likewise, if you hear mine, you should be encouraged to carry on. I pray that someone be encouraged today to stand in this and be, feel persuaded to push in. Because at times when you think that you have finished your assignment, you haven't. You need to recognize what your assignment is and follow it through. This was what Paul and Silas did. They stayed there. They preached the gospel. They ministered to this jailer and he repented in that moment. Now you tell me they got this in a vision and without hesitation, they went to Macedonia. What if in that moment they just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to leave, I'm going to run, I'm going to escape. Jonah tried it as well. When Jonah was sent to preach to the people so that they would turn, Jonah said no, he wasn't going to go because he thought that these, purple, these people were not, um, were, were, were not worthy of this. But who are we to judge? And God had to deal with him in a certain way to get him to acknowledge that this is your assignment. And at times, even when you're in the moment of it and you can look at the scriptures and think, you know what, it, it happens in different ways. And yes, Jonah was in the, the, the belly of hell, so to speak, but it was just such a coincidence that it's in that moment that big fish was there to swallow him up. That was his protection. That was still his protection. He was, even when you're in hell, God will protect you. That is still your covering. I'm saying to you, God will not leave you uncovered. He will not forsake you. God will see you through this. So may you today ask yourself, what is my assignment? And may you say to yourself, it is not about me. It is about the assignment. It's not for you to get out of it or to escape. You need to go through and to fulfill that assignment. What is it, what is it that God has called you to do? David did not back from the giant. As much as it seems like he would not come out the winner, but he did. God has got your back. So I say to you one more time, it's not about you. It's about the assignment. May God richly bless you today. And I pray that you, your eyes will be opened and that you will see that, you know, if you were to get success and you're, you do not accomplish or you have not fulfilled what you were assigned to do, in the end, it will not be worth it. There will not be the real benefit of it and you will not enjoy, you will not be happy. So may you turn today and ask yourself, what's your assignment? And when you recognize what it is, or if you see God in prayer and God open your eyes and show it to you, you know, question God, ask God, what am I to do next? Where do I go? How do I see this through? And in the midst of it, trust God. We just came from studying about faith, renewing our faith. Let us renew our faith in God and trust God that he would guide us along the right path and that we will go through and accomplish and do what God wants us to do. God bless you. If I can pray with you in this moment, if we can just go to the throne of grace and just speak to God. 
Hallelujah, we honor you, King Jesus. We magnify your name, God, for whom you are. You are like none other, our King, our Lord, and we worship you. And God, as you have spoken to us today, and the question has been asked, what is our assignment, God? Let each and every one of us ask ourselves the question. But in the midst of it, God, when we start that assignment or start to pursue, let us never ever make it about us because it's always about you. Knowing that God, you will get the glory in the end. It's all about your name be glorified. It's about you mighty God being in the midst of everything so that someone can turn from their sinful ways and to look to you. Father God, we know that if we seek you and your kingdom first, everything else will be added. So let us not in the midst of it look, look to, to achieve things for ourselves, but let it be that God, we will seek to win souls for your kingdom. Father God, even on this platform, if there's anyone here who has not fully committed to you, God, in one way or the other, there are things that need, need, need to be repented about, that they need to seek forgiveness. I pray that they will seize the opportunity to do it, God. Father God, there are times when you ask us to do something and we haven't even attempted. Because we're looking ahead and thinking, how can I do this? I won't be able to. But God, it's all about you. And you, mighty God, will make a way out of no way. And you, mighty God, will make the provision. I will re remember, Minister, even use these words oftentimes. And they stick with me, God. God will never give a vision without provision. Thank you, Minister Yvonne. May God bless his people today. May God keep you today. May God open your minds today. May God open your hearts today. And even this week and in the years to come, so that you will step out and step out boldly to do that which you are assigned to do, that which you are called to do, that which you were asked to do. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray for empowerment. I pray that your Holy Spirit will endow upon us, God, and that we will get fresh anointing to go through. Father God, I pray that our spirit will be encouraged and be uplifted in the name of Jesus so that we can go forth. Mighty God, if we're at the place where we're not sure, I pray that you will, Father God, just send someone that will guide us. And even so, let us seek guidance, God, because there are others who can direct us along the right path. It's not always about how we do things, but it's about the way it ought to be done. Father God, I pray that you will take over our lives, take over everything that we do, cover us, lead and direct us. And in the midst of it all, let us follow you, God. Let us just run after you in that which we ought to do. God, we tell you thanks for your love, your grace, and your mercies. And cover your people one more time, I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Amen.